Good morning, everyone. Welcome uh, to this morning's service. And we, as you all know by now, that uh, we'll be restarting our meetings or get a gathering or fellowship on a, on a Sunday from next week onwards. So we'd really like to encourage all our Vintuk uh, um, members to come to come join us next Sunday. Uh, we will give through certain measures to, to help, uh, you know, with the 50 limit that we have, uh, just to see how we're going to do it. But uh, please join us next week. We're looking forward to seeing you guys again. Really excited and, uh, and, and just getting back together and having fellowship. But uh, yes, this morning we're talking about part two, spiritual short-sightedness. And uh, just giving a quick background about last week, about what we spoke about, uh, things that, that really came to mind that I would like to uh, just recapture again and make sure that, that we all are on the same page before we move forward. So we had our key scripture last week, which was from Haggai 1 verse 7. That's where, where uh, the Amplified basically says, As thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways and thoughtfully reflect on your conduct. And what we need to understand up to this point is that uh, the Israelites or the Jews, the Israelites were all uh, captured in Babylon. They then King Cyrus of Persia uh, conquered Babylon and he released them to go and rebuild the temple. Uh, and as the, he, he also made a decree that as long as, as they go along, that uh, who, wherever the neighboring countries that they pass through need to assist them with whatever is needed, uh, livestock, money, the works. Um, they, they never needed anything. And just to, to understand, you know, uh, that as they were released, they came to that point where they started rebuilding the temple. But then we, we see that the adversaries, the, the neighboring countries, uh, come in and really bring a, a, a nuisance to them or become a nuisance to them because they start hindering them from rebuilding the temple. The Jews left Babylon in order to go rebuild the temple. And, you know, back then the context for them was to rebuild a physical temple, a place of offering. And I believe what God is saying to us as well, you know, uh, Step aside from your assumptions. Uh, carefully consider these ways. Carefully consider your conduct. And then, because you, you need to rebuild my temple. And, and God is clear that, that we are the dwelling place. We as a, as, as a body, and the body of Christ, we are the dwelling place. Um, we, do often, we very often forget that you know, church is not a building. We see it as a building. And for the past seven weeks, we haven't been to church, but that becomes our building, that becomes our place. So in a sense, we, we say, no, but we haven't been to church. But church is the body of Christ. It's where we come together, and we need to see that and, and understand. Uh, in, in a line of spiritual short-sightedness, and what, what I believe what God is speaking to us about, is saying that, you know, when it comes to Haggai and, and what the Israelites had to go and do, they, their short-sightedness become to, uh, was the place that they had a foundation that was there. The temple foundation was laid out, but they couldn't see the complete picture. And 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 God came. He's, you know, He wants to restore that to to its full glory. Um, and we'll we'll get to that slightly bit later. Rebuilding our temple starts in our hearts. We need to rededicate our hearts. But it, there's a place of renewal that needs to start. You know, and renewal. For me, is in, in three areas. It's a renewal of courage, you know, taking a risk for God, challenging, uh, allowing, uh, challenging ourselves to to really risk, um, and 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 put our trust in God. Then there's that renewed holiness. That's a place where where we need to go and, and and take off our shoes, and get back onto the holy ground where where God is, has a burning bush, and He's speaking to us, and the renewed faith. That's a place of saying, you know, as Thomas and John says, he, pushed, he, he put his uh, hand in the side of Jesus. He saw the hands and then he believed. And Jesus said to him, but blessed are you who believe and have seen. Um, so we, you know, believe. And that's the, the renewed faith part. And these are all small things that we can just, you know, it's, it's, a, it's just an application of the mind. It's a re, redirecting uh, our hearts and our thoughts towards Christ. And let us continue this morning from the book of Haggai and let us pick up on the story. As I said, you know, the Israelites were, were sort of in that place where the, where the 
whole thing stopped. They didn't want to, they didn't rebuild the church because advers, adversaries from uh, beyond the river, that's the province of beyond the river, started hammering them. And, you know, they started, they, they, first they came to them and said to them, listen, let us help you build. And the priest and the elders said to him, get away from me because, get away from here because you will have no part in this. Um, because they, they, they understood that they came with, with false intentions. And then they went and they, they, they pestered the contractors and they said, listen, you guys cannot be here. Um, make it difficult for them. And so the whole process continued until the Israelites lost courage, lost their enthusiasm, lost the whole thing of rebuilding the church. So they had the foundations and the, and, and the start of the walls there. And many years later only, uh, during the reign of King Darius II, did they only restart building. But what happened is they, and this is so beautiful, and this is how, how, how God amazingly restores uh, and what, what God, I believe, is going to do for us today. And that's, that's part of the third thing that I'm going to mention is, is called the shift or the transition that needs to happen in three areas of our lives. So let's quickly look at, uh, you know, if, if, if you take a decree, if you take what was made, the decree was made by King Cyrus that the temple for the Jews need to be rebuilt and resources need to be given to them. He basically just said, listen, go and rebuild the temple for the God of Israel and you are, we are going to help you with it. But the province beyond the river, they weren't too happy with it. So they wrote a letter to the current ki the king after King Cyrus. Um, now, this isn't the time where the building stopped. Um, and they basically stopped the, as, as, the, as the rebuilding stopped. They wrote a letter to the king saying to him, hey, listen, you, you got to understand, these, these guys have been uh, rebellious against you uh, and, and, and your previous and your dad and everybody else before your father. They, they've been, they conquered many other nations so that they are really not good people. And the, the Israelites, well, didn't really know about any of this. So the province beyond the river sort of got their, their way because the rebuilding has stopped. But here's the thing. Unlike today, they did not have uh, a cloud storage space. So part of this from, from this province, uh, a request that was made to the current king there, was to find the letter and the decree that King Cyrus has made. Now, obviously, I think in their hearts they thought, hey, this is going to take a long time, so don't worry, we, uh, and, and, and we doubt whether they're ever going to find it. So obviously there was a decree and there was copies made of, uh, a copy or two made of this, and that was stored in a specific place. So beyond the province, or beyond the river is a province that asked for this decree, uh, and in, you can read it in the book of Ezra, the whole account from basically Ezra, Ezra 1 to, to 6. Um, just read it up there, so I'm just going to quickly fast track it. So basically what happens is King Artaxerus uh, had his people look through the archives. They didn't have cloud storage, but today we do, so it would have been much easier just to go on a cloud in a storage space somewhere and try and find it, or on a hard drive somewhere, so it would have been a bit easier. But way back then, they had the decree, they had a, made a, they had a copy made, stored that in a place, and now, a couple of years later, um, they tried to look for it again. So what happened is they actually found the decree and King Darius found it. <laughs> and uh, only uh, King Darius got the letter because the taxes has, has been uh, stripped of his kingdom and then Darius came in, King Darius II. And in his second year, he saw the decree. And then the Israelites basically forgot about it. They got back into, into line and, and they, they got this decree. And what King Darius said, he said to, uh, to them, listen up, here's what you're going to do. And this is the decree from King Cyrus. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say to you, hey, you guys will now from the royal revenue also supply everything that is needed. You will basically fund the rebuilding of this. And you will have, there will be no excuses. I don't want to hear anything. This is it. This is a decree. And, Dar and Darius basically put a second decree on top of the decree from King Cyrus. And immediately this uh, started happening. So in Haggai chapter 2, we see that 
God challenges through a message through the prophet Haggai, he challenges the Israelites again. <laughs> um, and he challenges them. He says to him, listen, have you seen, have you seen this church before? Have you seen my temple before? Have you seen what it looks like? So uh, there was a festival going on. And it, from the older, older generation of, this, of the people that was there would have remembered what this, this, the, the old temple looked like. Because it was destroyed 66 years ago. Um, more than 66 years ago and now all of a sudden King Solomon built it so now they've got to re sort of rebuild it so obviously you can see there's, 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 a, there's a bit of emotion that plays a part in it and as this uh, king, uh, the, a new decree was, was, was made basically King Darius also said hey you, you're going to give them everything that they need livestock, the works this is what's going to happen so their discouragement after that's why God had to challenge them I mean, God, basically through this, he, what he did was he sparked the enthusiasm again. Because after he, they received all of this, they, they, they were able to receive, they were re able to restart building the process, uh, or the, the temple. There was a renewed energy that happened. Um, and that's the thing. Renewed courage, renewed holiness, you know, they could do offering again, and renewed faith. As the building started building, they could understand, they could see, they could feel what it's going to look like and how it's, how it's progressing. But this morning we're talking about the shift part, the action part, the transition that needs to take place. We can get and say, listen, I need to renew, I need to have renewed courage, holiness and faith. It's an easy way to say. It's something that I can just say. But the doing part is the, most, is the more difficult one. And that's what I want to challenge you on today. On today. So when we talk about shift, um, we talk about shift in three areas. We say that first, a shift of the heart Needs or shift or transition of the heart needs to take place. Secondly, a shift of the mind. And thirdly, a shift of the body. And the Lord sparked enthusiasm amongst the people of Israel. He did not just spark the enthusiasm. The only way that enthusiasm could have been sparked would have been from the heart. Because they would have, they, from the mind they would reason, sorry, but this is not going to work. This is not going to happen because we've got the opposition, the adversaries, they are against us, so why should we continue? So the mind would reason yes, but the heart would say, hey, the former glory, and what God is promising us to say, hey, I'm going to dig deep and I'm going to make this, uh, you've got the foundation, so I'm going to allow you to build from there, and I'm going to make it more spectacular than ever before. Just as the rebuilding of the temple had to, had to take place for the people to worship there, and to bring the offering, uh, so does the Lord have to do the rebuilding in our hearts. You know, my, my heart and your heart. Because the heart is a dwelling place. The heart is a spirit. The heart is the engine room of, of the body. And if the heart is not functioning, if the heart is not in line with and, and not connected to God, the, God is, uh, the, the heart is going to drift into depression, anxiety, fear, all of that. Because if your heart is locked on something, that is where it's going to go. So, I believe God is ask, asking us through this, these two chapters of Haggai to say, Hey, I want you to consider your ways. I want you to reflect on your conduct. I want you to evaluate your heart and where you are. Take a good look and see what has been happening. Is the eyes of your heart closed or are they shining? Because spiritual short-sightedness for me is that element of how do we see God's picture and not our, not our picture. As I said last week, the key to this is are we still kingdom-minded in this time? Or have we, have we have our assumptions and the way we live retracted us from normal life, from the way that, from, from what God is asking of us. So, God is asking us to take a good look at our hearts, you know. Um, and the shift in my heart that takes place is, is one of commitment to a bigger purpose than myself. And that is what needs to take place here. I need to choose what God is Plan for me, plan for my for, for, for our church. I need to choose to be able to invest in that. 
because I need to choose my heart to go that side. And if we look at Timothy Keller writes in his book, In Prayer, he writes the following about the heart. And he says, Biblically, the heart is the control center of the entire self. It is the respiratory of one's core commitments, deepest loves, and most foundational hopes that control our feeling, thinking, and behavior. To have the eyes of the heart enlightened with a particular truth means to have it penetrate and grip us so deeply that it changes the whole person. In other words, we may know that God is holy, but when our hearts, eyes are enlightened to, the, to that truth, then we not only need and then we not only understand it, it cognitively, but we emotionally find, God, find God's holiness wondrous and beautiful. And we avoid attitudes and behavior that would dis, uh, displease and dishonor Him. And he's talking about Ephesians 1 verse 8 where Paul writes about having the eyes of your heart enlightened. And this is the part where we say, yes, this is how we do it. We choose. We make a willful choice to fervently and wholeheartedly commit. And as Timothy says, you know, It's our core commitments, deepest loves, most foundational hopes that control our feeling, thinking, and behavior. The eyes of the heart with a particular truth means to have it penetrate and grip us so deeply that it changes the whole person. That is how we do. That's the shift that's going to take place. As if we change with a mindset and the heart for God's kingdom. We choose to rebuild the heart through our relationship with the Lord. And that's going to take a couple of transition that needs to take place in your, in your lives as well. Um, certain elements that you need to do differently. Things that, that were probably became a habit over the past few weeks that need to, you need to change again. The th second thing we're going to talk about this morning is a shift or a transition of the mind. Uh, the mind will always reason logic. We can. Uh, we will see that it, it will always it will always connect to the worldly things. It will always trust what it what it sees, what it can apply. But it's also the the part where the the enemy has the most influence on. As we just said, the heart is the engine room. The core there plays a, a, the core of that is our emotions, our feelings, our behavior. Um, is, is, is grown from that. And if you are so deeply invested in something, it will change the being, in, it will change you as a person due to that. But here's the thing with the mind. If the mind is first in line, the Holy Spirit will struggle to connect with, it, with, with your heart. Because as, as we, are, we are defined, or God has made us, in a three-part spirit, soul, and body. And you can read that in, in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23 where it says, May, now my, uh, may, the, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So note that they are defined separately and they are also in a specific order. And that is how the Lord made us to function. First, he touches the heart. He sparks the enthusiasm other people through the heart because they invested in that and then he changes their minds by by have, allowing them to to see um the uh, the what he has provided and in that and through that the the emotions their will and the attitude starts changing because it comes from the mind and as i said the enemy uses that a lot because the enemy can never penetrate your mind it can never Go in and sit there and say, hey, this is what I can see, so I'm going to start changing a couple of things there. No. And the enemy will plant ideas continuously in and around you to change your mind, to keep your, your heart from being in line with the Spirit and to have your mind try and reason with the logic that, that it sees. So, 
how do we how do we change how do we make a shift from that the the way to make a shift is to keep our mind healthy from and away from sin if i continuously watch pornography or i continuously watch uh, things that i'm not supposed to my mind will be filled with that and that will consume me because i will continue i will start to reason with that and immediately in line with that the body will fall because it will be something that i continuously think about and want to do and the spirit is left sort of on the side as a third wheel to tag along and that's unhealthy that is such an unhealthy way to live for me and for you a renewal of the mind is essential but first the heart needs to be in place the heart needs to connect with with the spirit of the, the holy spirit so that's the reason why we place the spirit first in our lives that's the reason why we think with our heart and not with our mind and the third thing that needs to shift uh, or transition is the body so i need to make certain changes to to my lifestyle more healthy diet the way i um, more sleep getting up earlier in the morning there are many things to to keep my body healthy as well but it will all be determined by the way that i that i feed my mind and where my heart is and the body is not the the least of it but it's the last part of the, of the triune man that god created and our bodies is the dwelling place for god because the physical beating of my heart is where where god shows life in me but we know that in christ we have eternal life so it's important for our spirit to be able to be connected but the body is a part that allows us to move it allows us to go to church it allows us to go to to a person in need um, the heart will feel drawn to that the mind will say yes because the, the spirit says the heart says it's right i've got to do that and the body will follow and it will always follow where the mind leads it and execute what the mind longs for you see how important it is to keep our mind also healthy but first to have the spirit in line and if we allow the mind to be first the body will come behind the mind because that, that's just the order and the spirit will be left aside you know israel was stirred um, in the heart first before their minds and their and their bodies followed and they made a decision to continue building the temple and that was a physical element and their mind reasoned with the logic and seeing how they how they how things were built up but the physical became easier because the spirit of israel was healthy you know and their mind began to see the beauty of what god was talking about god provided the best material to be built with um, all the resources that was needed to complete it but if israel remained focused on the half built foundation you know and the influence of the adversaries um, they would not have been able to see through the eyes of the heart see through eyes of what god um, had envisioned for the church or the temple to be rebuilt and that limits our sight so if we start thinking with a mind that's so and uh, we we're only going to see in front of us but the eyes of the heart if they are enlightened we start to see god's kingdom and that's my challenge for you today that's my challenge for you this morning is that allow the shift and make a willful decision to let the shift take place in your lives you know i believe god wants to do something spectacular as well in your life this morning so i want us to take a moment and as God says, ref consider your ways, reflect on the conduct that you've, on, on the things that you've conducted in the last, in the, f in the past few weeks. Let us give God an opportunity to touch our hearts, to realign our hearts with Him, to realign ourselves with who He wants us to be. Maybe you've struggled with, with uh, anxiety, with depression, with fear, with there's a multitude of things you're going through financial difficulties as we said you might have lost your job there, there's so many elements that plays a role that that would bring us 
to a low in our lives. But I want you to take this opportunity now that there where you sit, just to open up your heart and give your heart to the Lord. Say, God, this morning, I want to realign the triune man with the triune God. I want to realign, Lord, where my heart was not in the right place. I want to realign it with your spirit this morning. And Lord, as you come in, Holy Spirit, as you align my spirit with your spirit, align my mind, renew my mind, as Romans talks about, renewal of the mind. And that is something you can do every day. And Lord, come and renew my mind. Come and renew the physical body that I have, Lord God. As I'm sitting here six weeks later, um, after my accident, I feel exceptional because of the supernatural healing that's currently taking place in my body. And you know what? I can only give God thanks to that. But first, I had to have my heart in the right place so that my mind can follow my heart and my body will follow. But God promises us something today. And I want to end off with that. And then we're going to pray. And the Lord promises you today the following. In Haggai 2, verse 5 to verse 9, he says, According to the, to the covenant that I made with you, when you came out of Egypt, my spirit remains in your midst. Fear not. For thus says the Lord of hosts, Yet once more, in a little while, I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And I will shake all nations, so that the treasures of all nations shall, be, shall come in, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. The latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former, uh, the former, says the Lord of hosts. And this, and in this place, I will give peace, declares the Lord of hosts. My friend, this morning, that is for you. Because the word of God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The same what he said to the Israelites, to the Jews, for rebuilding the temple. He's the same as saying to you this morning. And according to the covenant he made with you, if you accept Christ he, in your life, you are making covenant with him. And because of that covenant, God can come and he says, my spirit remains in your midst. And this is what I'm going to do. I will restore this. I will shake it. So God's going to come and shake things in your life. Allow for that to happen. Allow for that to, to be stirred up so that the spark of enthusiasm can come so that God can show you and enlighten your, the eyes of your heart so that you can see a bigger part. That's what I'm excited about. And that is dealing with spiritual short-sightedness. It's shifting and allowing the Spirit to come and change us. And the verse I want to end off with is Haggai 2 verse 18 and 19. And just look at the... And, and, and what might have happened in your life. You know, we can replace many of these words um, and the way we do things with our current situations. But we, can, we, we, don't have to, we, we cannot replace the last part because that is the truth. And it says, verse 18 says, Consider from this day onward, from the 24th day of this nine month, ninth month, since the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider, is the seed yet in the barn? Indeed, the vine and the fig tree, the pomegranate and the olive tree have yielded nothing. Maybe there was no fruit. You've, you're suffering with that depression, uh, that anxiety, going back to work. You're worrying about the pandemic. There's a lot of things we can worry about. But that doesn't yield any good fruit. It does not. But look at the promise of the Lord. What does He say? But from this day on, I will bless you. I will bless you. And I want to give it to you this morning, my friend, that God blesses you abundantly. And if there was good fruit, He's going to make it better. If there's something roots or, or in, your, in your garden, in your temple, in your heart that needs to be sorted out, I pray this morning that God will come and shake the foundations as He says in, in, in Haggai 1, 2 verse, verse 6. He says, once more in a little while I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. God will come and come and shake what's needed to be shaken in your life in order to align you.
There's a big dividing line that's happening here. Uh, I believe in the Spirit as well. And let us not be short-sighted in thinking that we are okay. Let us re-examine the part where God is challenging us on and say, Lord, am I still in line with your way? Because I, need to be, I cannot look at myself anymore, but I need to be kingdom-minded. So God, I pray this morning that you will come and enlighten the, hearts of, the eyes of my heart so I will see your kingdom come and your will be done. Let us end off with prayer. Father, this morning I thank you that you are a loving God, that you are a God that allows us to consider our ways, Father God, and to choose. And Lord, I want to thank you this morning for the promise of your word that you come to restore and renew. But Father, that we do not have to fear this morning because your spirit is with us. It is in our midst. It dwells amongst us, Lord God. I pray, Father God, for supernatural healing this morning, Lord Jesus, in, in areas of anxiety, of fear, of depression. Father, that your hand and your spirit, Lord God, will continue to touch every person looking this morning. Every person looking this morning, Father, will be touched by your spirit. So, Lord, I thank you that you bring renewal that you will continue to renew the courage and, and spark new enthusiasm, Lord God, to, to continue to trust you, to rebuild our faith, to renew our faith in you, Lord God, to renew our holiness. Lord, I pray that you will show people the holy ground with, on which they stand upon. But Father, I pray this morning that the shift in our hearts will continue to take place first. That shift in our hearts, Lord God, will be first the first thing, Lord God, that moves us into your direction. And Lord, if we have have been away from you we have fallen short Lord God of what we were supposed to do Lord I want to pray for forgiveness for that and Lord I want to pray this morning that you will come and enlighten our eyes the eyes of our heart Lord may your kingdom come and your will be done in Jesus name Amen bless you guys see you next week Sunday at church